Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. And you are going in SmackDown Live. Huh. Hey, this is Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Watch, I'm going in the Raw. Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here, youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, and available wherever podcasts can be found, and of course, taped live right here at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Give us a follow. Check out the live show. It's fun. We do some bantering beforehand, and uh, yeah, it's cool stuff. Uh, we also have all sorts of bonus content, including... Today's Friday, man. It's Friday. We put up a vintage 10 for the win. What was it? Top 10 funniest games? Funniest games, yeah. Ha, ha. Right now, we're kind of visiting predominantly stuff from our second round of 10 for the win. But don't worry. We'll get some deeper cuts going. Uh, some older episodes. I just got to find the hard drive I've got all that stuff on. I got up. all the stuff. I got it on my computer. I got it like just pristine quality, man. No watermarks. Just. How much of it do you actually have, though? I got a lot. I don't have everything, but I got a lot. All right. Well, get on that, man. Because uh, our second run was kind of like not. I'm, a, I'm picking out the one, the better not of the great. second run. Don't not worry. But if, if I watch it and I'm like, this, this At least is they're up. clean. At least they don't need any editing. <laughs> then, uh, if, these, if they're not up to snuff, then... <laughs> <laughs> at, least they, at least they don't need uh, <laughs> any chopping for questionable content. Uh, anyways, the only way, the only way you can get, I mean, there other people have uploaded it to YouTube, but if you want the official way to get uh, Vintage 10 for the win, uh, through our pay, through Friendo Club, man, and you can get into Friendo Club three ways. Through the Patreon, uh, at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Uh, Twitch subs, all Twitch subs, Get emails whenever we do a bonus episode, whenever one's available. Uh, and then, of course, uh, YouTube channel members. YouTube channel members. YouTube channel members at all. Also, hey, while I read off these Patreon names, can you oh, do me a do favor that, yeah. if you have access to it? I think we've had two new YouTube channel members. All right, I'll do that right now. So if you can take a look at like the last two or maybe three and give them a shout out. Um, we got some new patrons in just today. It's the first of the month. Uh, Bailey Cohen. Sorry, excuse me, it's what? It's the first of the month. So do what, Larson? Cash your checks and come up. <laughs> Tommy Cat, Jesse Lucas, <laughs> and uh, JMC and Scotty Cura. Also, Adam Cassidy. We had like a bunch today, man. They must be cashing their checks and coming up. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, Jack Cleworth uh, and Nick C is back in the fold. Nick C, by the way. Uh, Nick C is the man. Yep. He resent the Vicky Guerrero uh, intro. I'm going to start Amazing. using that on news briefs next week, man. I'm excited about that. It, it's such a good one. And Evan uh, Parkhouse, uh, new patrons. Thank you. So I don't remember which ones. I think I we did not read these previously. Simon Bullock. That sounds familiar. Cortez Wiley and Lee Holod. 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 So those are all, all the one, the newest ones listed here. So thank you all. Yeah, thank, thank you, you thank so you, much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. We also got downtown CM Brown with a new Twitch Prime sub just tonight, and uh, just Omega Man Man uh, chimed in also with the sub. So thank you very much. Uh, so uh, Money in the Bank is on the horizon. We've got two uh, two up. We got Raw and SmackDown. Next week, and then is Money in the Bank a week from tomorrow, uh, Sunday rather. Sunday, yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing a live stream for that. I might post up in my backyard <laughs> because oh, I've got so nice. like a couch back there, and it's been the weather's been really nice lately. Yeah, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, I definitely know that we're going to be streaming live uh, during Money in the Bank. Uh, maybe this will probably be the last one we do separate uh because they're they're reopening the state i think like this week some to some well, degree some so phases, technically yeah. the shelter in place is going to be done with you're a lot they didn't say nothing about not being able to come to steve's house so you can come to steve's house if you want to if you don't want to i don't care maybe it'll just be me and like cal it. i'll just have cal come over there you go anyways uh so that being said they did confirm tonight uh fightful reported at some point last week, this past week, something like that, that uh, that both Money in the Bank matches 
would be taking place at the same time. Yeah. And during the promo tonight, they showed both briefcases next to each other. And so this is going to be, you had said that this is going to work if they do it, if it's madcap, if it's a mad, 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 oh, yeah, mad, man. mad money in the bank match. You got and that right. It looks like we're getting that. If it's the money, 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 money in the bank match. So actually the promo they, they showed, the first initial promo announcing it was going to be at Titan Towers. There is a shot of both briefcases up there. That's been there since they made the official announcement. Right. Um, and then, yeah, Daniel Bryan during his promo tonight said uh, six men, six women uh, fighting at, in Titan Towers get to the briefcase. Uh, he made it a bit, a lot more pointed that it was going to be going down at the same time. And later on the show, Mike Cole said, yes, both matches will happen simultaneously. Uh, and I can't wait if they go ridiculous with it, make a ton of fun. I want at least one shot of someone running down a hallway with a bunch of people chasing them. I want all this stuff. All the scenarios that Daniel Bryan uh, suggested in his opening promo, I want to see someone uh, 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 have their head put in the mouth of that T-Rex that Vince has in his office. Uh, all those things. I want every bit of office etiquette broken. Something expensive needs to be broken. Uh, it is, I, I want all that. Everything Daniel Bryan. I want Daniel Bryan to book this match because if what he said in his opening promo was any indication, what he has in his head as a concept for this match would be spectacular. Speaking of spectacular, shout out to the Captain Sin right here for gifting you, a ton Sin. of subs. Thank you very much for that, man. That's Thank awesome. You, Captain, Captain Sin. Sin, he came back last night for the Unsolved Mysteries watch party. I did oh. some Red Dead Online. Rich somehow, Dirty Rich, found me in Red Dead Online and kept on shooting me, but then we saddled up together and uh, I was I was on road to trying to find some money because my character needs some shoes. Anyways, uh, so yeah, that's very exciting. I think that's really cool. Let's talk about this now because I thought SmackDown was actually, it was a pretty entertaining episode. Um, they seem to be finding a really, really good groove uh, mm -hmm. within the limitations of the empty arena scenario. Again, it's, it's it, that extra hour that Raw has makes that much more of a chore these days. You mean the albatross that is that third hour, the 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 weight the that anchor. Raw has <laughs> exactly. hoisted upon its the shoulders in the third shoes. hour. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Because two hours, it, it's the same thing with, uh, I, I feel like, NXT, AEW, and SmackDown. I've, they're finding their rhythm. The, the episodes move. They're breezier. Um, I want to talk about this, though, man. Mm. Otis, main evented... SmackDown tonight. Yeah. Uh, in a singles match against Dolph Ziggler, qualifying match. Mm hmm. Is there any way Otis is going to win this thing? Because whoever wins it pr is pretty much guaranteed either. I mean, what was the math that Daniel Bryan gave tonight? 23, 23. You keep it. Oh, just, yeah, you're yeah, not listening yeah, to what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> no, he said math. Yeah, I'm talking to Baron. Yeah, uh, it was like, like 23. Baron was like one of the six. I think it's 82% success rate. That's what they said in previous episodes. They have a year. Briefcase. They have a year to build Otis to be a cash-in success story. I'm, I can't see Otis cashing in against Braun Strowman or Bray Wyatt. No. Too early. No? Too early really? for Otis. It's too early. They, oh, but they have a year. And, Not and, too early. Okay, so normally I would say, yeah, you're right. But... We're not dealing with any old Vince McMahon here. Which Vince McMahon are we dealing with? Apparently, screw it, Vince McMahon is what we're dealing with. <laughs> we're dealing with blow it up, Vince McMahon. I think they just really like Otis. I think they I do think like that... Otis, but I think the way to go is not to put the briefcase on him. The way to go is to put it on somebody from Raw. I think that's the more likely scenario because uh, once Bray eventually beats Braun for that title, Braun feels like such a transitionary champion, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man he's the least interesting part of the show and he's the top champion on the show he looks so un he looks like he's so ill prepared to be number one in an empty arena he, yeah. he, he can't settle Daniel Bryan really should be champion right now or I mean Bray of course but like Daniel Bryan opening the show it felt like Drew opening the show on Raw I know because that's one thing they're doing so right is Drew every week welcomes us into or welcomes them into our or whatever it is um he's very welcoming he's very inviting Heck and yeah, he's man. always like thank you for letting us entertain you and it's like you know, it's oh amazing. man he's such so a great I'm, host I'm looking at the the list of, of confirmed participants for the men's money the bank match and there's a TBD here because uh, Apollo Cruz is out. They're in a gauntlet match on Raw. Whoever wins that gets that spot. Well, that's going to be Andrade. 
of the names listed here, if I were to power rank them, it'd be Alistair one. Yeah. Okay. Put out. Put Andrade in there though. Okay, Alistair one. Okay. Um, Andrade two. Assuming it is Andrade, I'm not sure. I don't think that's necessarily a shoe in. Uh, Daniel Bryan three. Baron four. Otis five. Ray six. I think Ray Ray is like Ray last. I don't think he has any. I don't think he has any chance of winning. Wow, that's not. That's not. That's not disrespect. Because he's just. I mean, it's just. I just. I just don't see WWE putting that briefcase on Ray Mysterio. It's no disrespect to Gray. To Ray, Ray's great. Oh yeah, Duh Apollo's out. Andrade. Ray's great. He's a legend. I'm. 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 I'm a Ray Mysterio fan. No, you were so down on Ray Mysterio. Oh my gosh. Confirmed, everybody. Larson hates Ray Thank you, Stevie Bradley, for all the bits. Thank you, Kirsten, as well. Wow. Uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. Y'all are in a, Thank you so it's much. first of the month, man. Dom L, too. Okay, it's so the first of the here? month. Alistair Andrade, Baron, Otis Ray. Who else is in this thing? Daniel oh, Bryan. Daniel Bryan. And TBD. Well, that's Andrade. Um, okay, so. I don't know why you're so convinced it's going to be Andrade. Because they jobbed him out clean in like three minutes to Drew McIntyre, and they need to get him back on top, so he's going to be in that match. He just got pinned by Apollo Crews on Raw last week, too. Um, that tag match. Another reason why... No, I don't think it's a good Wait, he got what? Think. He got what? In the, in the tag match, he got pinned by Apollo Crews. Oh, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot they had those guys wrestle like five times in one night. Uh, okay, I'm so... not saying he won't be in it. I'm just saying it's not a given. Uh, well, Baron's gonna get thrown off Titan Tower, so he's yeah. he's last. Yeah, he's he's last. He's not gonna win anything. And on top of that, he's had it before. And although I do like the idea of of King Money and the King Miss King Money in the Bank, because it's like two gimmicks, like you know, a tournament and a gimmick match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hold uh, on, before you continue, see. Crayola Playboy here, and I've seen this uh, theory. A uh, glamorous jar mentions it too. I've seen this theory that it's gonna be gender. In the final spot. Oh, like yeah. Win money in the bank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, are they going to do people? Like, we don't know who's going to be in this match, huh? Yeah. Or in, in the gauntlet, do we? It has not been announced yet, no. Okay. I wonder if it's all going to be, be people. Like, it should be people who didn't get a chance at the qualifying matches. That's what it should mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. So Andrade mm-hmm. should be, but it's going to be him. Uh, let's see here. Number one. Here's the thing about Aleister Black. He doesn't unless he's a, unless he's like a declaring guy, which like nobody does that. Which is a really it's a missed opportunity to not do that because I think that's some interesting storytelling right there. Unless he's that guy, you kind of like he's he's you sort of betray a little bit of his mystique if he's a manically yelling at Earl Hebner to 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 ring the bell guy. Well, I think also if you have him carrying around this cartoonish looking briefcase that could. Less than the mystique too, unless he makes it look really cool. Like it's uh, what but was that then book isn't from? that cheesy too? <laughs> what was that book from uh, Evil Dead, the Necronomicon? Make it look like that. Good job on the pronunciation. That's right. Yeah, like the briefcase made of melting flesh. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Oh man, I just he doesn't feel like a money in the bank guy. So I he's... know, but just the power rank the guy, the people actually in the match. I know you're right now. You're power ranking based off of like how the you're, you're power ranking their power ranking. Your power ranking, their power levels, basically. Yeah. Alistair's power levels are, except you put Ray in like the last. So it's not going to, Alistair is just above Baron. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then just above him is. Also, I don't think WWE cares about uh, Alistair's mystique because they had him sitting in the room for f- six months. They think that's mystique, though. Yeah, they're wrong. Uh, and then let's see here. Okay, even if you take Andrade out, put gender. This is in. what you do with Alistair. You make his briefcase really giant, and that plank he's on when he elevates up, you take <laughs> that out and put the briefcase case. there instead. You're an idiot. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so Jinder ain't winning nothing, so he's just above Alistair. Well, I don't know. If Jinder's in the match, I think he might. He shoots number two in my power rankings. Get out of here. Jinder Mahal is not a number two power ranking. Yeah, he is. If he, if he wanted to win that, that, that briefcase and he feud with Drew... Given their history, heck yeah, man. All right. Uh, and then I've got just above gender, I've got Daniel Bryan. 
uh, because you're kayfabe the hell out of this list to put Otis number one. He's not gonna. He's not gonna challenge. I'm, no, I am doing the due diligence right here. He's not gonna challenge. Daniel Bryan's already had a thing with Bray. His picture's already on Bray's wall. That's not gonna happen. So he's, he's just never had above a thing gender. With Strowman though. And then that leaves Ray at number two, and Otis at number one. Because Ray is not going to challenge Drew McIntyre. That'd actually be rad if they had Ray true, uh, challenge Drew McIntyre. I'll be honest with you, man. I think I was going to win this thing. No, he's so, not. No yeah, chance. There you go. I should have made that the thumbnail today. Confirmed. Report. Report. Otis wins money. In no, the it's no report. It's you. It's your conjecture. That's not a report. That's you pulling <laughs> stuff out of your rear end. Hey, man. Kayfabe. Come on. I'm trying to get some money here. Ah, kayfabe's dead, brother. Come on. Get with the times. <laughs> Quick tell like Jim the Cornette industry. there. Quit killing the industry. We're no, all gonna be let's, let's, before we get to the recap, let's talk one more thing. Let's talk how awesome Sonya Deville is. Uh, she had another uh, fire promo today. Uh, man, the karma is a bitch, bitch line. That was great. Um, she's Here's the thing. Awesome the it's mic. not even a very good line, but she delivered it. You, she delivered it the way it had oh, to be delivered, which I made know. it good. It's good. And then that beatdown she had on Mandy after the match was great. Dude, the last shot into the uh, freaking like the, the Shining Wizard into the stairs. Man, that was awesome. That was great. That was great. Sonya Deville is is quickly ascending my power rankings. You need to follow uh, her on Twitter too. She has a hilarious. She's the only person I've ever seen who has a funny TikTok. Yeah, no, she's I follow her. Funny on TikTok I've ever seen in my life. I follow her on Twitter. She's great. She's awesome. She, no, yeah, she's great. Is, she's is she's tops, man. She, she's fantastic. I um, like, dude. Honestly, like the per the the object of affection in this whole feud, Mandy Rose is the only person who's kind of not not impressing. Like she's she's good. But everybody else, and maybe it's the kind of thing where she doesn't really have a lot to chew on right now mm-hmm. because she is the object of affection. It kind of works out that way, you know, like in a lot of when that, that's the story. Yeah, sure, sure. So getting a short shrift in terms of what to work with, fine. Um, but uh, but yeah, everybody else is absolutely killing it. I man, I'm into freaking Dolph stuff these days. Yeah, with this that whole bit with her, him and Sonya backstage was really good. You know, one thing that that set it apart. You know, it's that camera they use. Yeah, they use that for that, and then there's something else they use that camera for. I thought. Oh, too. did they? Yeah, earlier on, I thought there was a bit where the camera looked obviously different. They need to change that for every backstage segment. Hell, I'll be honest with you, the entire show because it's, it's like 24 frames or whatever. Yeah, it looked really good. Yeah, maybe it's when Sheamus was warming up backstage. Maybe that's what. It was. Oh, that could be. That could be. I was looking at his weird doughy flesh. Color. It's doughy color. Not obviously. He's very cut. Anyways. Yeah, he is cut. He's, he's in great shape. Thank you, uh, Enforcer. Thank you, Kirsten, for the bits. Thank you very much. Y'all need to stop that. Stop that. Come on. Just You're good. You're good. It's the first of the month. They got paid. They got paid. Thank you, A.O. Worm. Stevie Bradley's all stimulus. A.O. Worm's like stimulus. Kirsten ain't, ain't around here, so I don't know if they're doing stimulus in uh, Scotland. Anyway. Dominus with one bit. Thank you, Dominus. Stimulus. <laughs> If I bring Ru- if I get bring Ruby Riot the figure closer, will Dominus do? Anyways, it, it started with a Daniel Bryan promo, and he's great. It was fantastic. So uh, he was hyping up the mat. Oh, that's when he said six men, six women fight all at the same time. It's, he said, "That's wild." <laughs> he said, "I competed in some weird places, uh, pawn shop parking lot, pawn shop parking lot. That was good. Yeah, two other places, but the first time I've ever competed in an office building. Sadly, Daniel Bryan has been a DDT pro. Apparently, he says, "I don't know the etiquette." Like, if, if I just accidentally break something expensive, that could be held against me. He's like, I wonder, uh, that dinosaur, this is Vince's authors. But I'm excited. He talks with him by the bank nine years ago and how that really propelled him to be Daniel Bryan, as you know him now. Because no one ever thought he'd be WWE champion. Um, uh, but winning Money in the Bank, winning that first title, he said, was the most pivotal moment in his career. Because without that, nothing else really would have happened. No yes movement, nothing else. Uh, he's also saying he's a little sad that Drew Gulak's not going to be in the match. He blames Baron and his cronies for ruining Drew's shot at an opportunity. This brings Baron out. Uh, he tells Daniel Bryan, be careful what you wish for, calling out kings. Uh, he's, Baron says, my kind makes your kind suffer. Just look what I did to your coach last week. Throws the footage of finish their match. Uh, Baron then talks about winning money in the bank. Says that this year he's going to climb the ladder atop the tight towers, looking down the subjects. And then Daniel Bryan asks Baron, are you going to squander that opportunity again this time? Um, said uh, based on how you lost the previous time, it didn't make you look like a king. It makes you a loser. He was like chuckling while he was saying this. I Again, feel like Daniel Bryan was on the verge of laughter this entire time, which made it great. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, you know, I wonder. I wonder if you know we've heard that Brie Bella is not huge on Daniel Bryan still competing, given that he's got some sort of compromised immune system thing. Um, he looks like he seems like he's having a blast. Like this mm-hmm. whole situation is just presents a new challenge, a new opportunity, something different for him, and he seems to revel in that kind of stuff. You know? Heck yeah, man. Uh, Baron then says uh, a lot has changed since I each won money in the bank. He says Daniel Bryan used to be hungry. Now you're old and desperate. Look, you got Drew Gulak as your coach. Me, I'm stronger and I'm smarter. Mm. And I'm going to show mm. you now that that's the case. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. So that was match. Uh, it's a fun, fun match. Daniel Bryan could bring pretty much anybody to a really good match. Mm-hmm. You got Baron working over Daniel Bryan's shoulder and upper body. Daniel Bryan focusing his attack on Baron's leg. Back and forth. Tried um, to get a couple roll-ups, too. Didn't get them. Yep. Uh, in the end, though, uh, Daniel Bryan uh, sends Baron on the apron, starts stomping on his shoulder, uh, sends him to the floor, tries for a suicide dive. Baron catches him. They're brawling ringside. Daniel Bryan kicks Baron, basically kicks his head off. And then Baron throws a ladder at Daniel Bryan. Ref calls for the bell. Baron has been DQ'd. Yep. And then Baron's like, why? What did I do? Um, so much for being smarter. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> right, exactly. Baron yeah. brings Daniel Bryan on the ladder into the ring, goes, sets up for end of days on the ladder. However, Daniel Bryan escapes, puts Baron on the yes lock atop the ladder. Uh, Nakamura runs in, hits Daniel Bryan with a Kinshasa from behind, and then Cesaro hits Daniel Bryan with a uh, with the ladder, sends him out of the ring, and the close of segment. Braun tosses Daniel Bryan to a bunch of ladders on off the ramp. So now apparently Sami Zayn has been replaced by Baron Corbin. It's always odd that the guy who was billed as a lone wolf for a good number of years can't do anything by himself and is never alone. And they completely didn't even try to explain. I mean, I guess just because Daniel Bryan was involved in a thing with them before. That's, what it all, that's how it always happens with Baron. He just has henchmen. <laughs> never explain why. It's like the third time. Yeah. He's put people with him. No reason why. Yeah. So like when like, Lashley and Drew were his henchmen. Why? It'd Never be explored. great if there was just some like one backstage segment filmed with that good camera they have just explaining. You know, all you need is one interaction. You can write whatever you want. Let's just see it. I want to see it. You I'm know, it's funny because like uh, I've noticed uh, uh, Sean Rossap on his Twitter. Yeah. The thing that bugs him the most is is uh, when they violate uh, the, the brand split. When yeah, anybody like comes that. over, oh, he goes on one, and well, he's here's like, the thing. It's a, if you're setting about something in this self-contained world, you got to be consistent. If you're inconsistent, it blows up the whole world. I don't disagree with that. I just don't care about it. What I do care about is why people are teaming up with other people because yeah, that's that like bugs me. interpersonal that bugs relationships. Me. I want to know why they're with them. Exactly, that really bugs me. This is I like, can, you like can, I said, the thing is, is like you can you can motivate the brand split stuff by the most boring business trade, whatever. Like, I don't care about that. If they want to explain it, explain it. If they don't, they don't. They don't violate it that much. Uh, I understand his point. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, like, if somebody's going to show up to somebody's aid, it's like, I want to know why they're doing this. And exactly. where's the Intercontinental okay. Championship, by the way? Agreed. No, I mean, this, like I said, it's the third time Baron has mystery or, 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 or unmotivated henchmen without an explanation. And it, it irritates me especially for someone who's billed for so long as a lone wolf. Uh, we get a quick bit with uh, Braun and Alexa next backstage. Alexa hands Braun a shirt that's way too small. He wipes his face with it because he's already sweaty some, for some reason. Gets us the Florida heat and humidity. Hands it's it back to her and goes there, off. Man. He has a promo in the ring. Uh, thankfully, he didn't, he didn't have to talk very much. He talks about last week going down memory lane. But he says at Money in the Bank, I'm going to. He's interrupted by Bray Wyatt, Firefly, Firefly, Firefly Funhouse. Funhouse. It's story Hi. time. Uh, the tale is called The Black Sheep, and it's pretty much a parable about Braun and Bray. You know, essentially Bray brought him in, taught him everything, and then Braun just up and left. No thank you. No goodbye. That f- left Bray very sad. And eventually all the other animals left as well. Mm-hmm. He was all alone. The government put a lien on his property. They took that. Then the reptilians took over because <laughs> that's what reptilians do. The end. Oh, that's good. Is that a little jab at his brother, who's uh, whose show is podcast was Bo on talking about the reptilians that live in the middle of the earth? Was it Jericho's? Yeah, I think it was Jericho before WWE blacklisted him. I think it was that. Like anybody who wants to talk about like weird stuff, conspiracy stuff, or whatever, they go on Jericho's podcast now. He loves that stuff. 
Yeah. Did you see uh, that clip of Alex Jones talking about talking eating his neighbors? No. That stuff was hilarious. He's crazy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Anyways. So uh, Braun carries on. He says, uh, I'm going to come up with a happy ending, one where the shepherd, Bray, finds the black sheep. It takes away what makes him happiest, universal title, then takes uh, takes him to the slaughterhouse, and then, and that's when Braun interrupts and says, I'm tired of the funhouse. Bray, if you have something to say, come to the ring and say it to his face. And Bray just kind of stares at him and just waves. Bye. So this is normal Bray. We all know this. This has been advertised a couple weeks now, not as the mm-hmm. fiend, but mm-hmm. normal Bray, Firefly normal Bray. Bray yes. You think they're gonna jaw? It's gonna be like a wonk finish, right? This is the title's not. They're gonna, gonna take. do something that 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 prolongs the story, uh, just so whenever Braun faces the fiend, Braun does that job. <laughs> <laughs> Braun this is does. A, Braun's a good hand. He does the job. Transitional champion, man. Um, uh, they're going to use uh, Firefly Funhouse Bray, whether he, he he takes the loss clean or does some weird mind game stuff just to prolong the story and uh, uh, get to the idea that Bray is, is not only attacking Braun physically, where he's overmatched, but mentally, where Bray feels that he has the upper hand. Yeah, yeah. If he could somehow do that by letting Bray, Braun win or something, then so be it. Uh, next shot of Seamus with those resistance bands getting that pump on his biceps yeah dude he's jacked he is jacked that last shot of him after he destroys this jobber so they did a -A make-a-wish video package and then Seamus came out and he destroyed Leon Ruff who we've seen before Mm -hmm. uh poor Leon though he's got like he's a he's he's so tiny he's like a baby and uh and Seamus is is massive he's like 6'5 yeah yeah Seamus is a big dude He's huge. Uh, he just annihilates him, gets the bro kick at the end, and then uh, he gets. I think he gets up on the corner and he like does this thing, and his he is freaking jacked. I know when he starts flexing. Oh my god! He beat up Leon so bad that he gave Leon a wedgie, but never ever touched his 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 trunks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he goes over to Michael Cole at commentary, and is like, oh, "Are you going to talk about your best friend Matt Hardy?" And Michael Cole's like. Yeah, we're gonna throw this video package next. <laughs> yes, sir, we are. Yes, this, sir. Okay, talk about consistency. Let me ask you this: What? Why is it? Why is it? Michael Cole is terrified of Seamus. Seamus talks so much. He, you know, he gets in his face. He's all mean and stuff. Miz and Morrison come down. Michael Cole immediately, when they got on commentary, starts giving them so much shit. He was talking so much shit to Miz and Morrison. Why is it? Uh, and I'm assuming maybe Miz or Morrison are six five and two hundred sixty pounds. I think that's the, that's where you start. Yeah, but there's two of them, and they're still wrestlers. Yeah, they 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 come off more as I don't want to say clowns, but they're boarding on comedy act at this point. <laughs> okay, all right. The intimidation factor. I just isn't there. So we know we do know though, and I'm I'm kind of curious as what to the line the the wrestler of demarcation is the line of like. Who straddles the line of Michael Cole? Uh, can I talk crap to this guy or can I not talk crap to this guy? I think it's more guy? not a, a, a height, weight thing. Sure. It's, it's presence, how one oh. carries themselves, I think. Oh, okay. Like if someone steps to Michael Cole and it's like, like Taz. Taz is what, 5'8"? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Taz okay, is yeah. presence, you know? Yeah. No, he's, I didn't think it was a... scary. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's a height thing. No. I'm just curious what... That being said, though, I think if you have presence plus size, uh, you know, working it to your benefit, that only heightens the presence aspect. So, like, Brock is on the extreme scale, like, past Sheamus. Mm-hmm. And then Miz and Morrison are evidently, like, f- free game. Like, it's like, whatever. Yeah. But I wonder who, like, he is like, well, maybe I can. he talk a little bit of shit, too. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Anyways, yeah. we had a Jeff Hardy video package to come back. You know, uh, touches on his uh, substance abuse uh, issues. Uh, it's called the comeback. So it's all about him coming back. He's gonna come back next week. Mm-hmm. So uh, we cut back to live in the arena. Sheamus is lurking over sh- uh, Cole's shoulder, and he he asks Cole, "Oh, Jeff Hardy's gonna be here next week, huh?" And Cole says, "Yes." And he said, "Good, because I'm gonna be there too." So we're gonna get ourselves a showdown between Sheamus and Jeff Hardy. It seems. Oh like. yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, next, we have Otis Bex. Sorry. Yes, Otis and Mandy interview. Uh, Otis claims he's going to beat Dolph again, and then he's going to get the Money in the Bank contract for his peach. And then Mandy says what Sonya did hurt her, but she's looking forward, not backwards. So her focus is on Carmella. She's going to feast her eyes on Carmella. That match happened next, Carmella versus Mandy Rose. Uh, Mandy was in control, uh, but uh, pretty soon after the match started, Sonia came to the ramp with a microphone, and uh, she's telling Mandy she's there to support her. Uh, Mandy keeps the headlock on, but Sonia just keeps on yapping away. She reminds Mandy, and this is this is great because it totally happened, and we were totally like, why would she do this? A year ago, Sonia gave her spot in Money in the Bank to Mandy. Finally, she says if Mandy wants to show she's better than me, karma's a bitch, bitch. Bring it on. Carmella super kicks Mandy then for the win because at that point she was totally paying attention to Sonya. Yeah. Uh, Sonya then runs down to the ring and just beats the ever-living shit out of Mandy uh, while telling Mandy she's never going to be better than her. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it was really good. She sends Mandy to the ring post, and then uh, the ring steps and then hits a shining wizard, uh, which sends Mandy back into the ring steps, and then the refs and Jamie Noble break it up. And then, uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. then up on the ramp, and then little Nate just holding her back, and she wants to go back and get another piece of Mandy. Uh, she tells little Nate, "Get out of my face!" Mm-hmm. And then she screams at Mandy that she's going to ruin her life. Yeah, it was really good stuff. It was really good stuff. Sonya's top notch, man. Sonya Deville, she's like a MVP of a uh, SmackDown Empty Arena stuff. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. of them, anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we see Mandy and uh, Otis as well in the trainer's room. Uh, Mandy's got a decent looking scrape on her mm-hmm. leg. Yeah. Uh, the trainer uh, tells us, hey, get out of here so I can, uh, you know, check on her some more. Bah. He leaves the trainer's room. Camera follows. Oh, <laughs> interview earlier on between him with him and Mandy. Like the first two questions. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So over the top. So Otis runs into Dolph. And Dolph says, asks him, hey, is Mandy okay? And Otis, rather than answering, just <sighs> like he's a prank caller. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird that like that was a thing back when we were kids? People calling and just breathing hard, or, like making lame jokes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyways, after that we had the New Day versus the Forgotten Sons. Called this one, <laughs> Forgotten. This is a non-title match, by the way. And Miz and Morrison were on commentary. They were this actually, actually the pretty... highlight. Of the, the highlight of the match was them on commentary. It was. They were actually really funny during this. And there was a, a couple of spells where all of four of them were on the verge of just laughing. Morrison was Morrison was hilarious because yeah, you could tell he just doesn't care. He's just saying whatever. He's mm-hmm. like whatever. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, how did they get this win? <laughs> so, uh, Kofi escapes uh, the Forgotten Sons. I don't think it was her finish. A different move. Uh, sends them both out of the ring, and then Kofi takes them out. With a leap over the top, the one where Biggie flips him over his over his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, New Day is set up for up, up, down, down. Then Blake's in to break that up. Biggie uh, sets up for his corner spear on Cutler. Cutler evades that, sends him to the floor. Riker then gets Biggie, rams into the ring post. Uh, so essentially two on one at that point. It's forgotten the Suns hit their finish on Kofi to get the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they really telegraphed that 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 Forgotten Sons were going to win this match. Yeah, totally. Um, is this uh, is this the the peak of Forgotten Sons? Right. This is like it's all downhill at this point, right? Mm-hmm. They beat the New Day. That's mm-hmm. as far as they go. They beat the New Day in a non-title match. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they still got to win over the tag champions. Yeah, that's not going to happen again. No, I mean, in three months they'll probably be on. Oh, well, main events of Raw show. What do they got? What do they got these days? I mean, They're going to be on not no TV. Smackdown equivalent, I know. I know. Uh, after that, that's when we hear Michael Cole confirm that the men's and women's money in the bank matches will be happening simultaneously at the same time. I'm looking forward to this, man. I think this is going to be a blast. I think it's going to be so much fun. I really do. Mm-hmm. Crazier the better. Next yeah. we get a Tamina interview. She's asked by Kayla, can anybody stop Tamina? Uh, she said it took Foreman to beat her at Mania. She won't be disrespected by mean girls, meaning Sasha and Bailey. That's when Sasha rolls up, uh, tries to uh, bring up Team Bad, uh, says Tamina uh, helped her more than anybody else. Uh, sorry, helped her more than she could have ever imagined when she came to the main roster. And Sasha says, yeah, I like Bailey. 
But then she says some long lines of, but we could really carry ourselves like real champions instead of resorting to cheap shots. Mm -hmm. And that's when Bailey rolls up behind Tamina, tries a cheap shot, or Tamina turns around, catches her, grabs her by the throat, I believe. That was pretty cool, yeah. That was cool. It's like she her spider sense was tingling. Um, <laughs> it, Sasha runs in behind Tamina now, attacks her, brawl breaks out, Lacey Evans joins in, refs break it all up. You knew either tonight or next week we're getting a tag match with all four of these women. And sure oh, enough, yeah. that was announced later in the show. Yeah, that was actually announced. That's actually a thing. Uh, let's the see next here. Bit was actually really good. So Dolph and Sonya are backstage. They're talking. Sonya says, uh, "You know, I hurt Mandy. I'm going to keep on hurting her." It was like she she was she was con talking about Kirk. <laughs> what a great reference! Yeah, that's true. And then uh, Dolph says, "Yeah, I'm going to go hurt Otis." Uh, Dolph says, "Just because he knows how the world works doesn't make him the bad guy." He says, "The fans see themselves in Otis, but guys like that don't really win. They get the participation award. They think that heart matters more than skill." Uh, yeah, maybe with luck here and there, they can get a moral victory. But if you're looking for a winner, you're looking at him, Dolph, and he's going to win tonight. And then he's going to win Money in the Bank again. Then he's going to cash in again. Then he's going to be champ again. And this next bit was actually really good. It says, after, it says, Sony, after you're done hurting Mandy, I'm going to slide up next to her as champ and make her feel better. This entire thing was really good. Mm -hmm. Dolph, Dolph's delivery, and it helped that it was shot cinematically for some reason. Yeah, it looked really good. That, here's that the thing, really it was like, helped. It was, like, it, was a, it was a staging that we typically don't like to see two people standing next to each other with a camera there that's completely unmotivated. Yeah, yeah, but you know, okay, so there's two things. Number one, I think the, the, the different camera sort of took us out of the normal backstage segment thing. And I know really good. it wasn't like fly on the wall at all, but it's like I'll, I'll accept it if it has a more... If you use this kind of camera, you're sort of taking it out of the, the the unmotivated camera, and now you have just the scene. Like I don't know, I, I I really don't know like the cinematic equivalent, but you know whatever in a I movie. I understand what you're saying. It's rather what, than in a movie, whatever motivates a camera, nothing. It's just there. That's the way. You're, that's the language of film. Yes, exactly. With like sports, I guess. You have, you know, a 30 frame or sometimes like these days, like, you know, if you have a true motion uh, uh, display, um, it's just obnoxious. Also, I noticed during this and maybe this would have been the same had they used whatever camera. There did, didn't seem to be as like the camera seemed more calm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Usually the camera like moves a bunch or it's like mm -hmm. just feels like it's, you know, manic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This they did a really good job of just sort of focusing on like the performance mm -hmm. and Dolph's performance and Sony's performance was really, really good. Yeah. So, I think it's, it's, you know, the, the cinematic quality of the camera helped, but also I think it's it's the performance has really carried the day. But something I mean, something just changes with your perception as a viewer, with my perception as a viewer. No, I understand that I understand between that. like a nice camera and then like, you know, a, a sports typical TV stuff, a typical broadcast camera. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, Dolph brought the right amount of relatability and menace, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually that, brought a little bit of uh, gravitas. Yeah, he did. He did. A uh, couple things announced for next week. We get Daniel Bryan, Drew Gulak, and Mystery Partner. Predict who that's going to be, Steve. Uh, wait, what is this? Uh, Bryan, Gulak. Gulak and Mystery Partner against Corbin, Nakamura, and Cesaro next week. Who's Mystery Partner? Uh, what do you got? Corbin, Nakamura, Cesaro. I don't know who's feuding with these. Who's feuding with Corbin right now? Who did Corbin face at WrestleMania? Oh, I thought you were. I thought you actually had an idea. No, I saw someone on Twitter say Elias. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> oh, Elias makes all the sense because he name dropped Elias. Yeah. In the promo. Yeah. Good job, person on Twitter. Good job, person on Twitter. Uh, Sasha and Bailey taking on Tamina and Lacey, and then Braun and Bray will be face to face. And then Braun's gonna be awkward as shit. He's gonna, He's be, gonna sweating be sweaty. Profusely. You know that shot from Airplane, of Robert Hayes at the cockpit trying to fly the plane when he's yeah. pouring sweat. That's gonna be Braun yeah. next week. Exactly. And then finally, main event: Otis versus Dolph. Fun enough match. Otis wins. Um, so Otis catches him in the finish, toss him over his head, falls caterpillar, get the win. He tried to go for a caterpillar earlier. Dolph uh, rolled to the apron, avoided it, but Otis won. So that seems to be that for that feud, I would think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so, huh? You would think. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. That's a bummer. 
So Otis is going to be in the ladder match, and according to Steve, he's uh, his, his pick to win. The math works. I have the math right here, and if you could take a look at this math right here, like you'll you'll understand what I'm talking That's the about. Scrawlings of a madman. <laughs> you got that right, buddy. All let's right, do let's some do questions, some yeah? questions. Yeah, I'll go Twitch. to the Patreon. Sounds good. Cone Quest at this point, F it, Vince would make uh, Rollins' job to Otis. Maybe. Math works. Uh, the Enforcer says, Mods unite. Happy Friday night. Thank you, uh, Enforcer. Thank you, everybody. Did you look at mod chat on the down low? They got like six mods all just hanging out in their, zone, their own Zoom call. That's cool. And given they've been in here, they're on a Zoom call watching us. It's all sorts of weird going in rawception going on, man. It's weird. See, we got we got we got B Man, Wayne, Tim, Enforcer, Rob, Kirsten. That's pretty cool. I know it's pretty neat, right? They're all just That's staring really cool. at us. It's weird. That's cool. Uh, Tim looks the Enforcer. like a, yeah. Tim's not wearing a shirt. He, I swear to God, if I didn't know him, just looking at him, he looks like a serial killer. <laughs> when he's not when he's not wearing a shirt when he's wearing a shirt he looks like mild mannered uh cable installation guy yeah but here he looks like this is a serial killer shot uh the enforcer imploring me to fix my light switch back here well now you can't man. no now i can't it's can i draw on it with the sharpie i did that with a bunch of uh uh, uh my things here i like made cool little drawings and patterns mm -mm. can i do that on your light switch and make it look cool Probably not no right. Probably not can you just make burn marks coming out of it? Yeah, I'll get a lighter and just kind of run it in front of it, get some good scorch marks on there. Uh, Hugh Along Heavy says, Thumbnail Otis with his arms up holding both briefcases. Oh, there you go. I can Photoshop that. Mm -hmm. uh, Thayer Thebata see him, uh, says, Do cash ins need fans? And should the cash ins be delayed until the fans return? Yes. They should move the window. From unless, unless it's a heel doing the cashing in and they doing those schedule type gimmicks where they say, I'm going to cash in here and then then it's not a huge deal. But if you're doing the impromptu cash in at the end of a match when the champion is uh, at a clear disadvantage or whatever, then, yeah, you totally need it. You need the fans. The, nah, yeah. gender wins money in the bank and tells Drew, I'm going to cash in at such and such date to prove I'm better former three-man band three-man band member it doesn't need the fans here's the thing this is the reason why that's never going to happen because heath slater's gone they need to bring him back if they're going to reference the three-man band i don't think they need to uh heel long heavy thumb oh i read that sorry ryan k lamb alistair will win the briefcase and just carry with him that puzzle carry with him the puzzle block from hellraiser i don't remember the puzzle box from hellraiser. oh yeah uh i mean it just looks like you know a really cool <laughs> anyways um yeah i don't know i don't think that him carrying around the goofy briefcase gives me as much pause as him running down for an opportunistic it's got to be the schedule he'd have to schedule yeah nobody does that that's the most boring they have to know nobody when's the last time somebody scheduled a cash in it was mr kennedy God, was it really that long ago? Sorry, no, it was Braun. It was Braun. Braun did it at SummerSlam a couple of years ago. He said, I'm going to challenge Brock in uh, the cage match in Saudi Arabia? Was it the Saudi shows? Yeah, that sounds right. In Lost. Is it? Is that, that right? was the last scheduled one, yeah. Wait, I thought the cage SummerSlam. match in Saudi Arabia was Brock and Roman. There was one. But maybe it wasn't a cage match, but I thought it was there. It was It was one of the Saudi shows. All right. So I thought it was a cage match, but... uh. Because he tried to cash in at first at SummerSlam and didn't work out for him. Yeah, is that the one where Brock just threw it? Yeah, <laughs> that was so dumb. That was Roman so that dumb. Yeah. Huh? So, but then Roman won that match. Yeah, Roman won that match. Oh, you mean you talking about Braun? Like, yeah, I don't know. See again, this is why I shouldn't be on Quizlemania because I don't know shit about wrestling. I just talk, 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 talk. Although I had the idea today. Uh, next uh, next week on o on Friendo Club TV at some point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to do. You think of a wrestler, and then I have to do the game where uh, I have twenty points, and then or ten, whatever many points. Oh, the twenty questions essentially. I want to practice that. I haven't okay. been invited. Well, we've been invited, and we chose you. Um, but just in case, I want to start preparing for it. Okay, so. I got the opponent. It was a hell. It was a cage match, a Hell in a Cell match. It was Roman against Braun, when Braun cashed in, and ended in a no contest. 
Oh, God, that's terrible. That's, that's right. awful. What a waste. Dude, I got the cage match part right, at least. See, here's the thing, though. That's a bad pre- – like, that's – they they'll see that as just a waste. Nobody's going to declare. I don't know. I could see Alistair declaring. That's I think so it'd be boring, cool if though. someone declared and said, I, I want to be the main event of WrestleMania. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I think it'd be cool, too, but I just don't think they're going to do it because that just, you know, Vince, he don't like to choose the main event for WrestleMania until, like, the day of. Yeah. Or just, Alistair says, I want I want my shot against the champ at WrestleMania. Something like that. Dang, MQ, Sheamus gets the same reaction in these empty arena matches he did when he returned with fans. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna, they, need to, they need to do something more than just have him beat these... Uh, Florida loop players, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he's going to lose to Jeff Hardy next week unless they do yeah. like a DQ thing, but Jeff Hardy's coming out on the top of that one for sure. Yeah, he's get coming on top of the feud for sure. White Brownie Corbin should get thrown into a room with Vince eating a steak. Man, this is going to be off the hook. They're going to Vince is going to be in this thing. There's going to be all sorts of shit going on. I'm so looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. It's got to be zany. It yeah. Yeah. Uh Zay BC says, funny thing is DDT Pro recently had a match where someone had to fight through an office tower. So there you go. Watch this DDT Pro. Philly Flexer, my little sister got mad at King Corbin and said there should be two refs, one inside the ring and one outside to keep watch. Do you agree? No. I like one ref. Uh, I, I like the element of, of human error in, mm-hmm. uh, in sports. Uh, that's why I'm sad that the, all the sports went to replays. Like over, like excessive replays. I like some replays are okay, not all the replays. Yeah, you like you don't like too much replays. Kirsten, uh, where do you think the current champs would be if it weren't? Or, yeah, where do you think the current champs would be if it weren't for the virus at the moment? By the way, uh, Kirsten is, I think, the current featured viewer. I don't know what that means, so I'm not sure. I saw it earlier in the chat. It said she is now the featured viewer. So I don't know what that means. I don't know anything about Twitch. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> Real talk from Larson. I don't know anything about Twitch. Um, I think if it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't think they'd be a, like Drew was going to win regardless. Maybe Shayna would be the Raw Women's Champion. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, yes. No, I think that's true. I think, I think Shayna would be the champion. Um, the Captain Sin, by the way, I wanted to bring this up also. He ordered a Friendo Club shirt sticker pack. Uh, you can get those now from friendomarket.com. Yes. Well, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Uh, Brett TH797, thank you for the sub. Mr. Coffee says, two Money in the Bank cases suspended in the air. Can men grab the two cases and vice versa? Could you have the – he said, is this the first intergender match in WWE? I don't know. I'm sure that part of the stipulations is. Uh, Enforcer asks, who are the four horsemen or horsewomen of Mod Chat? Uh, I mean, there's six on Zoom right now. Okay, so let's take the six that are on Zoom. Uh, which of the horses? Because here's the thing. There's like, what, eight horsemen, something like that, all together? Or more than that. Like in the end, in the end, there was like 16, right? Something like that. What do you mean, WCW? Yeah, the four horsemen. Oh, I mean, like 12 members that have ever been horsemen? Yeah. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, it was a lot. So yeah. let's take from the entire pool. Who is Ric Flair? Wow. Is anybody Ric Flair? <laughs> I mean, it's. I think it's Tim. I would say it's is, Tim because Tim's kind of the straw that stirs the drink. He's incessantly shirtless, also. But now, you know, he's he's the guy. He's whenever we go somewhere and he's there, he's like, yeah, he's so damn helpful. And not well, to say that's compared to Ric Flair. He, but he's he's not just helpful in terms of helping us. He's helpful with everybody. He makes it an effort to go out and and meet every friendo who's in that building. He drank. On every Picard, by the end of every Picard review, he was drunk. Oh, all right. So that's Ric Flair. All right. I'm just saying, in terms of, of uh, Ric Flair was the unifying element of all uh, iterations of the Horseman. Yeah. Um, and Tim, like his his dedication to okay. Friendo's universe. Move on. We got a lot of people to talk about. It. He's also a drunk. 
Uh, the, so Alex C is our Sid because he's the tallest guy. He's super tall. Yeah. Yeah. Stevie Bradley, obviously, Arn Anderson. Yeah, Enforcer. Uh, Patrick Sparks. Uh, I guess he's sort of a t- uh, like a Tully vibe, right? All right. I was going to suggest maybe Malenko, but Tully's good too. Oh yeah, like he, he yeah. I don't know. He's sort of got like a Benoit vibe these days. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, about Wayne. <laughs> oh, jeez, he's uh, he's uh, who's the guy we always forget that was in the horse? Paul Roma. <laughs> he's Paul Roma. <laughs> uh, what about Rob Zerver? He's very crafty, very creative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Barry Windham. He just tried to disguise himself as Sting once. He kind of looks like Barry Windham too. That's actually, yeah, that's good. That's good. Who? Here's the thing. Who's Steve McMichael? Uh, well, I only see one more person here. I see Kirsten is, is Mongo McMichael. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you see that bit of him wrestling Kevin Sullivan? And it's, falling it, over the oh, ring? I love it. I love it so much. It's my favorite piece of wrestling. It's my favorite piece of wrestling. So, uh, or she can be Malenko. She kind of has, like, I'm looking at this picture right here. She ain't even paying attention. She kind of has an Iceman vibe. All so right, she Malenko could be Malenko. I think All she'd right, probably Malenko rather is. be Malenko than, uh, than yeah, Mongo. obviously. Well, then who's McMichael? Oh wait a second! Wayne's got to be Mongo, right? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna suggest that too. <laughs> then who's got to be who? So we we need a Paul Roma still. Uh, well, not present in this picture, and never present in any pictures I've seen of the Horseman. A O Worm. <laughs> worm is Roma. All right. <laughs> uh, fear and loathe and book Baron Hans Gruber moment at Money in the Bank. How's he going off that roof? <laughs> It's gonna be Elias, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's gonna be Elias. It's gonna be Elias for sure. <laughs> Clever jar. I can't wait to see the simultaneous money the bank matches, so I can see Anaya Jax injure more people than normal. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally true. Uh, beans from the east. If this lasts long enough, will this no arena time be known as the Effet Vince era? Could be. I hope so. Yeah. I want things to get really weird. Uh, Spectre says they should remake the Super Bowl commercial uh, for this match. Get it? Get it? Yeah, even with Vince at the end. Get, get it. With his weird get voice it. now. Get it. Uh, Nick Kyle says going in raw math for Yokozuna. Goodbye, friendo. See you next week for Money in the Bank. I mean, Yokozuna. he's going to be hampered, hampered by the uh, promo because he really didn't do much of his own talking. Yeah, but he didn't really need to. Plus, yeah, he kind of did on that bus when he told Shane Douglas to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a 10 promo in my book. All right, fair enough. <laughs> because that story was told by Scott Hall, which also makes it a 10. Okay, cool. let's see here. Uh, look, uh, in ring. In ring is like a 2, right? I know I mean, he's like, he's a true. big man who can move. Like being six hundred pounds and just being able to walk from one side of the ring to the other is impressive. But well, God. Like Pritchard, I mean, Grant, I'm not that familiar with his early work. But Pritchard said when he before he put on too much weight, like he could actually move really well in the ring. <sighs> the style back then at WWE was didn't demand a whole lot. Though. What? So what? Three? What are we talking? Three? Four? Yeah, three or four. I guess. Three. Look, he had a good look. He looked mm-hmm. scary. He did. Six. Look. Sure. Sure. Uh, promo. Ten. <laughs> Legacy. Uh, seven, six. That high? Oh, six. Six is good. Yeah. K- I mean, he was really champion something. for a long time. Yeah. In a really bad period. Oh man, how could we forget Lex Luger? He was a horseman. So was Sting. Sting was in the Horseman too. Who's our Luger? I guess Wayne could be. No, Wayne's a mo- Wayne. Wayne's, Wayne's Mongo. Michael. <laughs> I gotta see who's. I love Wayne so much. I really do. Uh, kayfabe. He beat a lot of people. Yeah, kayfabe's got to be like eight, right? He he ended Hogan's WWE run, man. Is that a nine then? No, nah, eight's fine. Eight's good. All right, I'm gonna knock this promo down to like a seven because I do think that. Menacing can make for a decent promo. So six plus three is what? Nine plus seven is 16 divided by. So it's five plus. Five plus. Plus six is 11. 11 plus eight is 29 divided by three. 
No, that's not right at all. No, you, 11 plus 7 is 18. 18. Uh, it was 11 plus 9, I think. Oh, that's 20. So. 6 plus. No, you're right. You're right. It was 11 plus. Fuck, what was it? 11 plus 8. 19. 19. 6 plus. 6 plus, yeah. That sounds yeah, about right. Works. Die Hard Homer. Four horsemen are like the Avengers in the comics. Almost everyone was out at some point. That's right. They just. Mm hmm. Sort of a rate, extremely high. Yeah. All right, I think that's good. All right. Are we good? Sure. All right. Apologies to any mods if we missed you in the Four Horsemen chat. I'm just I'm seeing who's in front of me. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of mods. Oh, what about Cody Miles? He's like the real. He's like the tech guy. He's like Tony Stark. He'll be Tony Stark. Maybe he could be J.J. Dillon. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. Good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Who's Oli? We need an Oli. Uh, Oli was a dick, and uh, he looked like a depixelated Arn Anderson. And he did voices too. He was a voice guy. <laughs> he did voices. He did the Shockmaster. Yeah. And he did a uh, Black Scorpion too. Since he's the voice guy, and technically I have mod abilities, can I be Oli Anderson? Sure. Nice. Because can also be the thing about then? Oli is that nobody liked him. <laughs> can I be Luger then? Yes, you are totally Luger. <laughs> There's a storm coming. His name is Lex Luger. <laughs> That's it for now, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.